And we're back in Inside the Ropes, and this week we have uh, a man who's infamous within the last decade of professional wrestling, um, and we thought we would bring him to the show. He's a, a very lovely man, as long as there's no babies around. Uh, it wasn't his fault. It's the one and only Gene Snitsky. Gene, welcome to the show. Thanks. Thanks for having me. Glad to be here. So I guess kind of what we try and ask a lot of people who come on the show is, um, how did you sort of... How did you get, become involved with wrestling? Were you a fan of it growing up, or was it something you kind of fell into? Uh, yeah, I mean, I was I started watching when I was 10 years old. I just loved the uh, the characters. I loved the theatrics of it. That's what really caught my attention. I, I wasn't really into the wrestling, per se. I was more into the characters and the showmanship and the, and the you know soap opera aspect of it. That's what really drew me in. And how did that end up parlaying into you getting involved with wrestling? How did that come about? Uh, you know, I just... I was always a fan growing up, and, uh, you know, as I watched it and I got bigger, I was like, oh, I'm as big as that guy, and I could do that, and I'm as big as that guy, and I could do that. Oh, I'm bigger than that guy, and I could do that. Because I was, you know, I was playing sports since I'm seven years old, so I've been, you know, I was a top athlete in my high school. I went to college on a full football scholarship. I was first team all state, all that kind of stuff. So I was a really good athlete, you know, athletically, so kind of just a natural fit for me because I was also, you know, class clown. I like goofing around and, you know, I'd do whatever I could to try to make somebody laugh or get a reaction out of somebody. So it's pretty much uh, tailored to my personality. So this was a nice, it was a natural fit. And then once you kind of got involved with wrestling, you ended up getting to the WWE and um, how did how did you wind up getting involved with WWE? Um, and I think you, you went to developmental for a little while. How, how was that experience? Uh, well, I had my dark match in October of uh, 2003, and then I got signed in uh, April. Let's see, April. Uh, did you, I got signed like in April of '04, but I didn't go to Louisville till like June. So, but uh, then you know, then I moved to Louisville, and you know, just went through my training. Bill Demont was one of the guys that trained me, and uh, Lance Storm. But Lance, you know, Lance worked with the smaller guys, and Bill worked with the bigger guys. So I was with Bill mostly, but, uh, you know, Lance was super cool. Bill's awesome, you know. But I still, I still keep in touch with Bill, and, you know, he's just a really cool guy. So, yeah, so then I just ended up going to, to uh, Louisville for camp and just caught on to it real quick to their style, and then I was for, fortunate enough to, you know, be involved in the King and Lita storyline, and as they say, the rest is history. So yeah, I mean, because you had one of the most intriguing debuts um, of of a lot of a, of any character, really. So, what was the initial idea for for the character, and um, what did you think about it? Because I guess it's a you know you're just starting out, or you're just going to be starting out on TV, and your first big angle is going to be with Kane, one of the top stars. Um, how, how how was that sort of pitched to you? Uh, it really wasn't. I didn't have any idea what I was doing. They just called me on a Friday. And uh, it was actually Howard Finkel. He called me and said, hey, uh, we're going to be flying you out to uh, Seattle, so I'll give you your travel itinerary, and then Sunday you'll fly out to Seattle, we'll put you up at the hotel, and Monday you'll, you'll be at Raw. I was like, oh, sweet. So I, I, honestly, I, there's not really a good story behind it because I didn't even know what I was doing until I got there. So. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm curious about who... Who came to you with the sort of whole "we're going to go with the miscarriage" thing, and what were your initial thoughts when they when they told you that's the, the way they wanted to go? Well, actually, I, like we were doing the walkthrough in the ring, and that's when I first found out about what I was doing. And Vince was there, and he was, you know, t- talking me through it and telling me what was going to happen and stuff. And I was like, "Oh, sweet!" So, I mean, I never really got, you know, any idea of what I was doing until right when I was doing it. So we did the walkthrough, and then, you know. All I remember Vince saying to me was, now make sure you hit him as hard as you can with that chair so when he falls down on the leader, it looks real. I said, don't worry, Vince. I'll take care of it. <laughs> and uh, and that, that kind of spawned your uh, your signature catchphrase, uh, it wasn't my fault. Was that a catchphrase that sort of came about by accident because you just sort of said it and it caught on, or was that sort of a pre-planned thing? Uh, it actually just kind of happened. All the best things just kind of happened, so... It just kind of happened. It came out of my mouth, and you know, the next week people were chanting it and yelling it at me. And to this day, I have at least two to five people every day of my life say, say that to me, either on Facebook or Twitter, or just in person walking around wherever I'm at. 
I always have somebody come up, hey, it's not my fault, ha, ha, ha. So I, wish I, I wish I had a dollar for every time I heard that. Um, as someone who, you know, like you said earlier, you, you grew up being really fascinated by the the characters and the kind of soap opera aspect. I mean, it doesn't really get any better from a soap opera perspective than the character of The Undertaker. What was it like getting to to, to work a little bit with him? Oh, uh, it was great. I mean, we actually did a lot. I, I did a lot with him, actually. I mean, we did a lot of house shows where we did tag team matches with me and Heidenreich against him and Glenn. So, I mean, we did a lot of stuff together. It just wasn't on TV, but we had a pay-per-view thing where I jumped in, I think, during a casket match with Heidenreich. And, uh, I mean, it was great. I mean, he's, he's really easy to work with, too. I mean, I got along with everybody. It was fun. It was a fun experience for me. And, you know, obviously, at that level, to be working with guys like that is, you know, quite an honor. So, yeah, to this day, I still kind of, you know, go see him or, or you know, him or, him or Glenn, you know, we always have a laugh and talk. And, you know, everybody's, you know, still super cool. And and you you would go on to have sort of various teams. You teamed with Tyson Tomko for a while. You teamed with Goldust. Um, was there any of those teams that you kind of wish had, had you'd had a longer run with? Was there some that you feel could have it could have gone further? Yeah, I wish uh, me and Goldust could have wrestled a lot more together because uh, they were actually going to give us the tag team belts and uh, just never materialized. He kind of had some personal issues he was dealing with, and then uh, just kind of fell apart. But yeah, we were we were slated to be the tag team champs, and then uh, you know, it just never happened. But you know, it was fun, and it was probably my favorite six months of WWE was tagging with him. We had a blast, and it was just you know really really fun, really good times in and out of the ring, and you know, just uh, unfortunately it ended too soon. But you know, and you you, know. you also you also got to to participate in one of the the fondest remembered backstage WrestleMania skits. Um, at WrestleMania 22, and uh, with Mae Young and Goldust and all all the different guys. Um, as someone again who'd sort of grown up watching this sort of stuff, um, what what was it like being a part of of those sort of WrestleMania skits that had become so famous over the years? And and did you get to have part of the creative of coming up with how that was going to play out, or was that just sort of given to you? Uh, you know, I was. I was very fortunate to be put in good scenarios and like I said, uh, just the right place at the right time and for some reason I just had that magical touch where if they threw me into a situation I just made it, you know, I made it either really funny or I made it really creepy or I made it, really, it was always something people talked about so in that aspect, you know, I was very fortunate but yeah, I just love doing all that kind of stuff. I got to a wacky sense of humor, so that was perfect. I love that skit was great. <laughs> <laughs> and you, you, what was quite interesting about your career in WWE was, you, you know, you had the the first couple of years there, and then you kind of came back on the ECW brand, and you shaved your head, you put the kind of uh, coloring in your teeth and stuff like that. Was that all your idea to do that sort of stuff, and was that something that you sort of pitched to them to say, I want to change this character up, or was that something that they wanted you to come up with? It was actually uh, all Vince's idea, that character, the bald head. And, yeah, I didn't. I was just that. Uh, I was working out in the ring one day before TV, and he just called me over and said, Hey, I want you to shave off all your hair. I was like, Oh, really? Okay. Uh, you serious? He's like, Yeah. And go see the makeup lady. See what we can do to make your teeth dirty or, you know, see what you can do with that. So that's kind of how that led into that character. So. And did you enjoy becoming like a because obviously when that character came on TCW, it was like a, a monster character. Did you enjoy kind of getting to to play that kind of role? Uh, I mean, I'm a I'm an entertainer, so I didn't mind playing any role. I like you know I enjoyed all my characters, but you know the only problem with that character was painting that stuff on my teeth. It just turned into a to a chore. It was it was hard to get on and. It took me, you know, quite a while to do it, and I had to do it four days a week, and like 20, 30 minutes to get it perfect, so. Because I'd, I'd do it, then I'd wipe it off, then I'd do it again, I'd have to wipe it off, because I wanted it just right, so. So I got it the way I wanted it, it was about a half an hour. And um, you you ended up going back onto, being drafted back onto Raw uh, in 2007, and you would uh, you'd have a main event match in Raw with John Cena, but then they, they kind of seemed to place you more in a sort of uh, 
enhancement role for people. Was that kind of what led to you leaving in 2008? Well, I mean, I just wasn't happy with the direction of the character. I mean, they were pretty big on saying, you know, well, hey, you know, if you have any ideas, run them by us. And, you know, I'd run by idea after idea, and it just wasn't sticking, and I didn't like the direction of my character. So, you know, it just it ran its course, and it was time to move on, and that's what I did. So, but yeah, I mean, I, I don't have any complaints. I don't have, you know, don't have anything I would change. I loved all my time there, and, you know, WWE gave me the opportunity of a lifetime. So, and you you're now you've now moved on to to acting, and you've got a couple of things in the pipeline. Um, there's a a Power Rangers project that you're involved with, and then you're also involved with Rumble Rama, um, upcoming. Can you can tell people a little bit about those projects and what they can expect from them. Well, I mean, anytime I'm involved with a project, you could expect it to be you know entertaining because I'm going to bring all the entertainment that I can to my role and to the project. So uh, the Power Rangers thing is going to be really cool. I'm doing a really epic fight scene with uh, one of the Rangers. So that's going to be awesome. And uh, we're filming that in New York City, so I'm really excited about that. I can't wait till that starts. Uh, I'm coming over to England in hopefully November. We haven't gotten our shoot schedule yet. But uh, Andrew Carson, who is the uh, producer, director, has been in constant contact with me. And uh, him and I have become really good friends. And, you know, he's told me that uh, they're going to shoot in the fall. So uh, I'm just excited about that as well. You know, Rumble Rama, getting a lot of publicity on the uh, on the Internet and throughout Facebook and Twitter. And uh, I think that's going to be one of the surprise hits of the, the fall once we get that filmed and, and get it out there. There's a lot of really cool people involved. And uh, Andrew's got a really great script and, and I'm just thrilled to be involved, and I can't wait to get it going. And you know, I'm doing my own movie as well. I have uh, I'm co-producing a movie called Manhunt, and that's uh, directed and written by uh, zombie stripper writer and director Jay Lee. And uh, we have Patrick McGee doing the special effects. He's the guy from Spider-Man and Terminator Predator and all those. So we have a really good crew at that, and we're hoping to film that in the fall or early spring of next year. And uh, you know, I just got a lot on my plate, and uh, just trying to stay busy. You know, I got another movie that's in the in the pre-planning stages called Dark Force, where I'll be an evil entity for a, a house that was possessed, and the family's getting tormented by the evil entities on the the lead evil entity. So, you get to torment the helpless family in the movie, so it should be pretty cool too. And you know, countless TV shows and, and stuff. You know, just here and there. And, just trying to stay busy, man. Acting is my true love. That's what you know. I love to be a character, and I love to entertain. So, like I said earlier, it's just a natural fit for me to you know do wrestling and acting and all that kind of stuff. And let's face it, there's not too many guys walking around the world that look like me. <laughs> That's true. Um, one thing I thought was quite interesting was a lot of uh, a lot of pro wrestlers are now moving into acting more and more. You know, Batista's doing stuff now. Obviously, The Rock and. Steve Austin. Do you think that's something that we're going to see more of, seeing guys who you know get to sort of flex their acting muscles in the wrestling business moving into acting? Well, just to touch upon that subject, I actually was a full-time working actor before I even started at WWE. So guys that have wrestled and then think they want to go act, it's uh, not as easy as people think it is. I'm, I'm a trained actor. I was a working actor. I did commercial work in Europe and United States. I did movies for Bollywood. I mean, I was full-time working actor when I got signed at WWE. I had to leave that to the side and do WWE. So now I'm getting back to it. But, uh, I mean, a lot of the guys that wrestle, are, you're just acting anyway. I mean, you're portraying that character. and You know, it's a lot of acting. It's a lot of physicality. And uh, in this day and age, people like that kind of stuff. They want to see a big guy, you know, either, you know, beating somebody up or you know, saving the the, the heroin, the, the uh, helpless girl and all that. And, you know, it's just people like sex and violence. It's so simple. You know, they always say sex sells and, you know, big muscular guys are, you know, attractive to women and it helps with, uh, you know, creating that, you know, that uh, audience. So, I mean, it's just a natural progression for most guys, but, you know, some some guys you know, really just have that natural, you know, ability to do that. And uh, I think that's why you're seeing more and more guys from wrestling, you know, try to get the transition into acting because 
WWE is basically you're just acting that character. So, you know, it, it touches upon the broad spectrum of all the elements of acting and throw in all the stunt work that we do and all that kind of stuff. So it's always good. And, uh, you know, a lot of people contact me for doing fight teams and that kind of stuff. So, I mean, it's that type of background, it's, you know, it's pretty good to, to have that in your repertoire. Gene, thank you very much. Uh, it's been a pleasure, and I hope you enjoy the rest of your evening. All right, buddy. Thanks. Have a good night.